everybody. Say hello to our friend, Mr. John <laughs> Baptiste. Hey, John, good to see you. I uh, see you swinging in there. How oh, you baby, feeling? baby. Yeah, I was swinging like a gate. <laughs> how are how are you doing? You know, the debate is always a harrowing experience to watch. I I can't watch it. And it is. I, I, I um. But you also can't new. look away. Right. Exactly. It's like it's the worst thing. But you know, other than that, I'm optimistic that we're going to show up and vote and have the right result happen. Now I know you're voting early this weekend, right? I think you told us oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what are you going to do on election early. day itself? On election day itself, I'm actually taking a band <laughs> and I'm going to Philly and we're going to play for the voters as they're waiting to vote. We're going to encourage people. It's going to be a celebration and we're going to manifest the rightness. That's fantastic. Well, good luck with the, the manifestation. I know you're going to bring it. Can, do you oh, have, we do you, always got to bring it. Do you have any debate music for us before I go into uh, the, the lovely <laughs> Governor Cuomo here? Let me just alchemize it, change it up a little bit. <laughs> John Baptiste, alchemizing everybody. Thank you, John. Whoop! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my guest tonight is the 56th governor of the great state of New York. His new book, American Crisis, is a New York Times, oops, bestseller. Please welcome Governor Andrew Cuomo. Governor, Your Excellency, thanks for being here. Nice to see you again. Good to be with you, Stephen. Now, uh, you and this great state of New York uh, got some airtime tonight. The, uh, Trump said that New York used to be vibrant, now it's dying. And he called New York City itself a ghost town. Would you like to respond on behalf of your state? Yeah, well, then you must be a ghost, Stephen. Uh, look, it's nothing new. Uh, Trump hates New York. Um, feelings are probably mutual. We did the exact opposite that he has done on this COVID situation. Uh, he's lied to the nation about it. Uh, and we did the exact opposite. Uh, we had the worst situation in the country, maybe on the globe, because the federal government missed that the virus uh, had left China, went to Europe, and was coming here from China, uh, from Europe. You know, the president loves to talk about the China ban. What he leaves out, Stephen, is that it was in Europe, and it came here for three months before he did the European travel ban. Uh, and he's deceived the American people, and New Yorkers did the exact opposite. We told the truth. We're honest. We acknowledged it. We were smart about it. We are united. Uh, we work together, and we brought the rate down now to one of the lowest rates in the United States of America. New York has a lower infection rate than the White House, Stephen. Uh, so, yes. Uh, and I've been a critic of his, uh, so I understand how he feels. Um, for the record, I'm not a ghost, uh, Governor. I'm just so pale that I'm translucent. <laughs> no. Well, he said a ghost town, and you're there, so I assume. No, I understand, but I can understand why people would, might mistake me for for someone from the afterlife. You 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 are also a frequent subject of Trump's tweets. Why do you think he's fixated on you, sir? I think, uh, first of all, I think the president basically is a bully, and he's accustomed uh, to uh, attacking someone, uh, and they back down. And when you attack a New Yorker, a New Yorker doesn't back down, and I'm not going to back down when I'm defending the people of the state of New York. Uh, and he's just wrong. And the way to deal with the bully is you stand up to the bully. He has been deceiving the people of this country on COVID, and uh, over 200,000 people are dead. And, Stephen, the worst is still ahead, as far as I'm concerned. You're going to see a great government blunder when it goes to administer this vaccine. Uh, this is just another, uh, another scam that this president is playing. It's been public relations all along. And now he stands up there tonight and he says, within weeks, there's going to be a vaccine. He's been saying within weeks since September 15th. Uh, and then what he doesn't want to answer is, and once there's a vaccine, how do you produce 600 million doses and how do you administer it? I have a general. And is the general going to inoculate school children and senior citizens in nursing homes? I mean, uh, he's never had an idea about how to do this. Uh, he's always denied it. 
Uh, he's never even been engaged. He left it to all the states, uh, and then he told the states, don't do anything. And the states that listened to him now have higher death rates than before. Uh, state of Florida, that he loves to talk about as his model, uh, they had over 100 people die in the state of Florida. New York had 15. Under this president, about 1,000 people die every day. That's three, four, five times the number in the UK and Mexico and France and Spain and Italy. Uh, it has been an atrocity. And the worst part of it is, forget the politics, people have died because of it. It, it, it is a, a massive, um, I was going to say slow rolling tragedy, but unfortunately it's a fast rolling tragedy. The number of deaths every day, be, because the White House and the administration did not take this seriously from the beginning, matter of fact, played it down and lied to the American people. But if I can just talk about the politics of it for just a moment, obviously it's the right thing to do for the American people to have taken this seriously. But it's also the right thing for him. I mean, not that you did everything right from the beginning, but the, the people of New York saw that you took this seriously and that you did your best to mitigate and you continue to do your best to mitigate the problem in New York and that on a daily basis you kept them informed. He could have had all that goodwill from the American people by seeing that he cared. They, the American people know there's a problem, and they can tell that he's just lying. Why, for just political expediency, for his own sake, wouldn't he take this seriously? Yeah, because a skunk doesn't stop smelling, and the skunk can't stop smelling. I'll write that know? down. Hold on. I got to write that one. Skunk. <laughs> skunk. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that one. I've heard the tiger and no. the stripes. I didn't know the smelling one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is that an Italian thing? I like thing? this I don't know better. About? Okay. All right. Yeah, no. It's a New, it's a New York thing. Okay. Uh, look, yes. If he could have led, if he could have gotten past himself, if he could have thought about someone else, if he wasn't a narcissist, if he wasn't paranoid, if he was competent, then yes. He, I agree 100%. He could have stood up. He could have told the truth. He could have looked at the camera and said, this is America. We're going to come together. We're going to unite. And we're going to beat this virus. And I'm going to tell you the truth because we can handle it. Yes, I believe. And by the way, I believe tonight we would have been talking about the fact that he's going to get reelected. The American people were afraid. They needed leadership. Uh, and he failed. But had he done it, had he been a leader, yes, he could have changed his political fortunes 180 degrees. Instead, he confirmed who he is, which is a liar. He is deceitful. That's what he did with COVID. And he says uh, in the Woodward book, the American people would have panicked. The American people don't panic. He panicked. I didn't panic, and New Yorkers didn't panic. I looked at them every morning, Stephen, and I told them the truth. I showed them the numbers. I showed them the facts. I told them what we were going to do about it. And this state turned everything around. That's what bothers him about New York. It shows him what this country could have done. How did we go from the highest rate in the United States to one of the lowest infection rates in the United States after what New York went through. And why isn't that the story in every state? Why do we have seven months later these states with hundreds of people getting sick every day when they had seven months to prepare and there's still no testing, there's no tracing, there's no hospital beds? It's a it's an historic government blunder. And New York represents the opposite to him. And that's why it's galling. And do I uh, speak to it every chance I get? You're damn right I do. Now, I want, I want to talk about the uh, the 40 states that are currently on New York's quarantine list and three more now qualify, but they're exempt, uh, which is New Jersey, Connecticut and Pennsylvania. How long is this sustainable, sir? Uh, my, my, my home state, South Carolina, is on that list. What, what's going to happen in the holidays? Are people going to go, be able to go visit their families? Can I, can I go to South Carolina, come back, and still come into the city to work? How long is this going to go on? Yeah, here is the problem. Uh, 
we started a quarantine list when some states went very high because the infection in New York was then uh, the main obstacle was people coming in from out of state and bringing the infection, right? So we started, we had a couple of states on the quarantine list. What has happened, Stephen, is our rate is so low and all the other states are now so high that they all pose a threat. And you're right, it is unsustainable. We have like 43 states on the quarantine list, you know. We're like the island of the state of New York right now. Uh, uh, and the quarantine is you can come back, but you have to quarantine now for two weeks uh, before you, you're exposed. I'm working with some health, health experts to see if we could come up with an alternative mechanism that uses technology and uses the new testing instead. Uh, because look, um, we want to keep ourselves safe here in New York, uh, but um, we also understand the practical realities of people have to come and go. Uh, governor, we have to take a quick break. When we come back, I'll ask the governor about some of the lessons he's learned and that he's put in his new book, American Crisis. Stick around.